that we're able to give it to him tonight. So Mike, where are you? This guy. I could tell you stories from when I was a kid. Honestly, Mike, the first time I ever smoked weed when I was 14, I was listening to your record. How's everyone tonight? Good, good, good. Happy Thanksgiving to you. And I'm so happy to be here and uh, know a lot of the musicians that are here. We were reminiscing backstage of my jam sessions with Jimi Hendrix standing toe-to-toe -to -toe there in Hollywood many nights playing and uh, some of the guys that are here were in those champs with us. Led Zeppelin, when I met uh, Jimmy Page, he had the Yardbirds back in 67. Great band, great guitar player. And then we re-met and went on tour, Iron Butterfly, I had joined them and uh, Led Zeppelin was our opening band. Boy, when the kids hear that, they come up and do that thing. <laughs> Led Zeppelin has really survived. They've done a great job doing it. Well, I was great. Uh, I, I'm glad I got to ride, ride Captain Ride and sing it with my group, The Blues Image. What a lot of people don't know is I had written a song right before an incident happened with the North Koreans where they took our ship, the USS Pueblo, you remember that? They took it out of the out of the area that it was in and took it back to North Korea. It's still there right now. And uh, the survivors just had their 50th anniversary and I want to reach out to them and say, we're going to let the message be known that you guys were sitting there for one year in North Korea being treated really poorly and bad health and, and everything. And we're going to let people know, because people hear USS Playboy, they don't know what happened. Well, when I wrote the song, I wrote it before the incident happened. Now that's kind of weird when you're talking about 73 men sailing up from the San Francisco Bay and uh, rolling off to history. Well, throughout the years, I've had people from the Pueblo come up to me on my tours and say, Hey man, you wrote that for us, you're alright, you know. And I said, brother, I wrote it because if we didn't have a song to record that day, we were not going to be in the studio, we were going to lose our deadline. And I didn't want that to happen. But yes, it's for you too. One day, folks, I don't normally tell this story, but I've been asked to. One day, a gentleman came up to me on tour and said, you know, I'm probably the only guy in the world that knows why you wrote on the third verse. No one heard them calling. No one came at all. Cause they were too busy watching those old raindrop fall. I said, oh, you know why I wrote that? Well then tell me, because I don't know why I wrote that. And he said, I was the radio operator on the USS Pueblo. And when the North Koreans were coming up to us with jets and machine guns and all kinds of things going on, I'm going, mayday, mayday, but the word couldn't get out because it was a terrific storm with the raindrops falling and it blocked the signal, so we couldn't get our May Day out. And that's why you said no one came at all. They were too busy watching the raindrops fall. And the Pentagon wanted to know how I knew the story. And I said, see, this is what's wrong with our government. You're asking me why I knew it before it happened. <laughs> you should throw that in. But what we're doing is we're gonna do a movie called The Mystery Ship, and we're gonna honor the people from the Pueblo and we're gonna go out on tour and we're gonna get the ship back. That's our ship. And those survivors, those gentlemen that endured hardships and torture will really appreciate it. And tonight we dedicate my two songs that I'm doing that I was part of, Ride Captain Ride and Agata DeVita. We're dedicating it to the borderline victims and also the victims of the California fires and their families. All right, God bless them all, God bless you. Peace and love, brothers and sisters. Thank you.